Today we are going to talk about doing well in ministry. Doing well in ministry. The, what is the meaning of doing well in ministry? What really is the meaning of doing well in ministry? Because we did not understand that there is a difference between sacred word and the secular word. Hear me. There is a difference between sacred word and the secular word. What does it mean that a man is doing well in ministry? That is what we are going to discuss today. Please, every viewer, you that is watching me right now, every child of God that is coming to encounter this message, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and also follow me on my Facebook page so that you'll be receiving all my updates. And remember that we all will join hands together to save lives. Share this message to many people. Forward this message to many people in your contacts. And the Lord will bless you for doing so. What is the meaning of doing well in ministry? Because we did not understand it. If we understand it well, it will help the kingdom of God and help the children of God that are looking for God in life. I see young ministers, I see people that God called, they are struggling and competing here and there because they miss the purpose why God called them. As I said, what is the meaning of calling of God? I dropped a message that said that calling of God is not for entertainment. So if you have not watched that message, look for the message, it will bless your soul. Do you well in ministry? Does it have anything to do with money? Do you wear the ministry? Does it have anything to do with crowd? That a man is doing well in ministry. Does it mean that a man will have big cathedral? That a man is doing well in ministry. Does it mean that that man will have private jets? What really is the meaning of doing well in ministry? Does it mean that that man will have great congregation? Before you know that your man is doing well in ministry. Doing well in ministry, does it, mean, does it mean that the house of God or that particular church or ministry where the man or woman of God is residing, that their AC will be everywhere in that place? Does it mean that your man is doing well in ministry? I discover he's not. Doing well in ministry only means one thing. That a man is fulfilling the purpose why God called him. That man is doing well. A man that is fulfilling the purpose of God's calling in his life. A man that is doing exactly what God called him to do. He may be a pastor, but he is pastoring the congregation in spirit and in truth. With God's word, nourishing them with the word of God loving them sincerely from the bottom of his or her heart and guiding those sheep in the fear of God with reference and with the fear of God without deceiving any one of them without, without duping any one of them without cheating any one of them and without focusing only in sucking the milk or the breast of the sheep but he is adding to their spiritual life, adding to their physical area, adding to, to their life in different ways. That man of God, if you find that man of God, that woman of God is doing well in ministry. His or her member may not be multitude like that. It may not be overcrowded. He may not have uh, uh, many members. It may be five members. It may be ten members. It may be twenty members, fifty members, hundred members, according to grace of God given to that man of God, and according to the chief God directed to that ministry. Because Bible makes us to understand, no man cometh unto me except that the Father draweth that man closer to me. It means that every man of God, every minister, every ministry, that until God draw men and women to you, no one will come to you. I'm talking about those people. There may be three people, there may be ten, there may be hundred, there may be one thousand members, there may be five million members. Depend the one 
the number of the people God will have drawn to you today. But those people that you have, even though there are two members, you will pay more attention on them, teaching them the doctrines of the Bible, teaching them the ways of God. That particular minister is doing well. And the, also, maybe God will call this man in the area of prophet. He gave him the spirit of the spirit of the prophetic grace. That man can prophesy, that woman can, of God can prophesy, and the, he or she pay attention prophesying to the congregation of the Lord and using his or her prophetic gift to save life. Not trying to con- use it to convert money, not trying to use it to make to be making money. In as much I know that the man's gift to make it way for him, when he uses it well, but his his or her intention of using that gift, that prophetic gift, is to save life and to serve God and serve congregation. And he he or she is doing that work with the sincerity of heart. That man, that woman of God is doing well in ministry. Because we must understand the statement of Jesus in the book of Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. The Bible said, no man can serve two masters at a time. Either he serve one and reject the other. Either he obey one and disobey the other. Jesus went ahead and said, no man can serve both God and the man one. Both God and mammon. And the, the mammon does not mean money. Hear me. That mammon Jesus mentioned there doesn't mean money. The mammon Jesus mentioned there was a Syrian deity in those days. It was a deity in Syria. That is, is like a deity in a shrine in Syria. That anybody that need wealth, that need material blessing, that need financial blessing, that need wealth, will go there and bow down to that deity and worship that deity. And when you do it, the deity will empower that individual to make wealth. So that is why, and this God also has the power to empower us to make wealth on earth. That is why Jesus decided to use it and said, no man can serve two masters at a time. You cannot serve both God who has the power to solve all your needs, to provide all your material, financial, spiritual, eternity need, and you cannot also bow down to that God and also bow down to Mama, who have only power to meet up your physical need with that eternal need. So now, doing well in ministry has nothing to do with the number of crowd the man or woman of God has. We must get this thing right. No man called himself. And no man bring member to his church. No man, no man gather sheep for himself. The Bible says, no man cometh unto me, no one cometh unto you as a man of God, as a woman of God, except God Almighty, the one that owns them, draw them to you. So God can decide to draw 10 people to you. He can decide to draw 50 people to you. He can decide to draw 100 people to you. And the focus in those people God will draw to you and give them exactly what God wants you to give to them. Pay attention in that area God will call you and feed them and serve God and those people together. Because every minister, every man of God will serve God and congregation. We serve God and men. So now, we use the gift of God in our life to serve God and to use it for the benefit of the cheap. And uh, I understand the area of financial needs in ministry. I do. I have been evangelist doing the work of the ministry as an apostle, evangelizing the gospel of the kingdom. I have congregations. I have branches of this church. And I understand what it takes to 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 uh, to preach this gospel. It requires money, but I know that if you continue looking at the number of members you have in your church, you will be deceived. I want to tell you that the the favor of God that will come to you, the blessing, the divine supply, the financial blessing God will send to you and send to your ministry. It may not come from that two people or five people you are teaching. Focus in teaching them. God will know how to send men and women that will come to help you in order to feed the sheep God sent to you. 
Those chief God sent to you, God will know, God knows how to bring men and women who will support you financially, materially, in order to take good care of those chief God sent to you. Because we know that every chief God sent to us are precious before God. Don't forget that this chief cost Jesus his blood. He cost Jesus his life. Jesus shed his blood for the chief. That is why God cannot play with the chief. And that is why God will hold every minister, every man of God, every woman of God responsible for destroying or deceiving the chief God sent to us. So doing well in ministry is beyond having money, is beyond having the largest congregation, is beyond being the richest man of God, is beyond having private jets. Don't forget that Satan can give us all these things. These things are distractions these days. They are distractions. So every man of God is struggling to prove that God called him. Everyone is struggling because they, they, we decided to, to limit the calling of God. We decided to judge the calling of God based on the number of congregation you have, based on the kind of place your ministry is, is located, based on the kind of material acquisition we have, based on material achievement we have, based, based on the money in our account, based on the, the way people talk about us. I know that God did not call us for fame. Hear me, man of God. Hear me, woman of God. God did not call us for fame. God did not call us to introduce us to people. God did not call us to advertise us to people. God called us so that we introduce him to people. God called us so that we advertise him to people. That is why God called us. God did not call us so that we be so influential, if I may use it, or that we should be so, so, so popular. No. But God called us so that his name will be so influential that we make him to the world so influential that we make him by preaching of his word to people so popular that every individual, every creature will hear the gospel of the kingdom and they will come back to the savior of their soul. So now, as you choose to do well in that ministry, no matter what you are seeing in ministry today, don't quit as a child of God, as a man of God, as a woman of God. That financial challenges, that material challenges, that member challenges, challenges in the area of members. Because members, their challenges is more. The, the challenges you will be having as a man of God, as a woman of God, in the area of turn up in your church, in your ministry, it may weigh you down if you did not understand what it means to do well in ministry. If you did not understand what it means to do well in ministry. And I used to say that on the last day, the people that God will value, that man of God, that woman of God, that God will say, well done, congratulations, you have, you make me happy. It may not, may not be the largest populated church. It may not be the richest men or women of God upon the earth. It may be a man of God, a woman of God, who choose to obey the voice of God, who choose to do exactly what God called him or her to do. Maybe that individual may be inside one job, that church may be inside one room, that church may be two members, that church may be three congregation, it may be three members in that place, it may be one, 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 one member, five members, it may be one thousand members, but I'm talking about, it has nothing to do with the, with the population of the church, it has nothing to do with the location where the church is based, it has nothing to do with the financial status of that ministry, it has nothing to do with the popularity of the ministry, but everything is based, everything is based on the obedience of that minister of God and the fulfillment of his or her calling in the world. That is the meaning of doing well. If truly you are doing what God called you to do, you are doing well. If what you are doing right now is what God assigned you to do on earth, as a man of God, as a woman of God, you are doing well. You may not have material things, you may not have those things now, but the Lord shall supply all your needs. Focus in that thing you are doing. Focus in that your assignment. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't measure yourself. Uh, don't be intimidated by the success or, uh, or influence or wealth of other ministry, other men of God and women of God. Don't allow those things to intimidate you. Just pay attention. Focus in the assignment God called you. The Lord who called you will prove himself in your life. God who called you will prove prove himself in your life. Don't try to, to do any stupid thing. Don't try to go to a wrong place in order to be like other ministry, in order for your ministry to be like other ministry, in order for your church to 
be like other church, in order for you to be like other men and women of God, maybe in order for you to have the latest car or to buy the private jet or to have the largest congregation, don't do any stupid thing. Just continue following God. God who called you knows how to send blessing to you. God who called you knows how to send material resources to you. And I decree that wealth is coming to your ministry. I decree that gold and silver will, will come to your ministry. Your hand will handle gold in abundance. Your hand will handle silver in abundance. In the name that is above every other name, this calling God will call you today, you will fulfill it. In Jesus' name. Any area that requires money, God will send money to you. Any area that requires people, God will send people to you. Any area that requires material things, God will send material things to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Learn how to do well. And if you learn it and focus it, you are doing well in ministry. As long as you are doing what God called you to do with love, with the level of your of strength God gave to you, and with your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your life, you are sure, you are true with all your heart that you are serving the Lord and serving the people God sent to your ministry. You are doing well. Man of God, woman of God, may the blessings of God rest upon your ministry. In Jesus' name, I love you all. See you next time and drop your comments. Bye for now.